Bob, I got a couple of questions. You're a PhD in what? Transportation engineering. Can you build me a car? Can you design me a plane? No. That's okay. You got more college to go, right? I mean, you you come all the way from where today? Pleasant Hill. Is it pleasant over there? Yes. You get out all the time. Thanks very much for coming. You use body makeup when you do a love scene. No. You can tell me later. Fun in the Sun is brought to you by Ziploc Double Zipper Bags. Ziploc's tightest seal ever. <laughs> no, I love dancing with you, but it is the first night of our honeymoon. I know. So you want to go upstairs? No, I want to stay right here with you. First, you'll have your dinner of mashed peaches and yams, and then I'll have mine. And then we will have a bath, and then straight to the crib. All right, no arguments. Just because you're shanking up with your old man does not mean that you don't have a schedule. I read the books, too. All of the books. See these? See these? Scrambled eggs. Making them just like your mommy liked them. <laughs> Scramble my eggs hard, your mama used to say. Uh, I guess Jessica wouldn't say that, would she? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe she would. You know, I used to be able to tell them apart in a heartbeat. No, not so much. Okay, enough about me. I want to know why you fired Rex. Uh, because all this talk about dead ends was a bunch of bull. I was paying him all that money, and he was doing absolutely nothing to find my kid. That's not true. How would you know, and why would you defend him? You know who took your son. It's Spencer. He did everything he could to convince everyone in this town, including me, that you were a murderer, and he's good at covering up his tracks. So I have to get a good lead before they put him away. <clears throat> And I have to find someone with more experience than Rex Balsam. Yeah, and who are you going to hire, Tom? Yours truly. <laughs> What's up? You okay? Yeah, it's just a headache. Hmm. Did you tell McBain that you thought yes, maybe it was good? I did, and he told me to come by for some tests. And it says it's stress-related, but it's it's gone, see? It just kind of comes and goes. You sure? Yeah. Good, because I have more bad news. What? When I came up from the school, I found Star in here with Cole. Are you kidding me? No. After everything that's happened, she brought him here to the house? Yes, I kicked him out, but she really let me have it afterwards. She's really into him. About as into him as, uh... I'm into you. <laughs> Hey, Boilermaker. <clears throat> oh, it's just the one. What are you doing here? I thought you were turning into one of those palace type guys. I was on my way home from Vicky's and I saw your car in the park. Mm. Well, I meet Paige when she gets back from Atlantic City. Uh, is that the reason for the Boilermaker? <laughs> Big brother. I found out some news. Natalie, you're telling me that the man in this room is my brother, that the, that, that the man in this room is John. I'm sorry. I, I'm really sorry, but I, I can't. I, I can't believe it. Okay, and I reacted the same way when someone told me, but Michael, it's true. That man in there is your brother. He's alive. I identified the body. I know, but the body was so badly burned. The St. Jude's medal. I know. The tattoo. It was a partial. There's no way for you to have known. His badge was next to the car. His body was next to it's the car. It's circumstantial evidence. Look, there were a lot of coincidences that we all read wrong. Natalie, I care about you. I care about you a great deal. Don't do this to yourself. Please, I won't let you.
are nothing like you. Why don't you cut her a little slack? I'm trying to protect her. Ten to one, that little punk's still using steroids. You could have come in here and freaked out like you did at that party. You could have. Well, what, raped her like you raped her? Don't get in my face about I'm not. it. You know I've changed you completely. And I hate the man I was, and I hate this little punk Cole. Well, I hate the fact that Cole is Marty's son. I wish it was anybody else but hers. No kidding. But I think Baby Star is angry with you because, you know, she forgave you. And she expects you to understand if she forgives Cole. She hasn't forgiven him. She told me. Okay, Todd, what happened at school? Oh, exactly what I expected. Principal doesn't want to lose her star quarterback. That. And then, uh... And then Marty comes in and she gives me this sob story about how she's a single mother now and mm. struggling to raise a child in a room. Blah, blah, and blah. Blah, blah, blah. And I ruined her life. So what happens now? I told the principal that if she didn't expel Cole that I was going to pull Star up. What did Star say about that? I have no idea. Didn't ask her. It's none of her business as far as I'm concerned. Todd, you can't do that to Star. I can't. Hey, sweetie! Star, come down here a minute! What are you thinking? What? Um, we want to talk to you a minute. Maybe you do. Dad just wants to tell me how to feel. What maybe I know what's best for you. Maybe you don't, and maybe you never have. Hey, you watch you your You think you're the only person in the world who can make mistakes and get away with them. There was no doubt in our minds. At the time, we identified the body at the scene. There were no other unidentified victims there. But looking back on that night, I think we we made some assumptions. We could have made a mistake. I don't think he said Nato seems certain. She was in love with the guy. She wants to believe. <laughs> Sounded stronger than that to me. Well, you know, your daughter doesn't back off. So sit down. You know, when, uh, when she couldn't get me to listen, you know what she did? She went to John's grave and tried to dig it up herself. I hope to God somebody stopped her. Yeah, Vincent Jones. He stopped her. Christian's former manager? Yep. That guy is all through this whole thing. He's the first person that uh, suspected that Hugh wasn't Hugh. So he went to Natalie? Right. Hoping for what? I don't know. But I've got a request for a DNA sample from the uh, the victim that's in the burn unit in Atlantic City. I've also uh, filed for an exhumation order for the body that's buried in John's grave. Now, if it turns out that John is the patient in that Atlantic City hospital, then we have to get a positive ID on the body. Well, odds are that it's Hugh Hughes, right? Hugh and John were both at the station on that day. Maybe John accidentally dropped the medal. Maybe you picked it up. Does Paige know about any of this? No. I don't want to say anything to her until I know something positive, one way or the other. It just it would be cruel. So you're going to see her tonight, but you got to keep all of this from her. That's good reason, Bo, to limit the Boilermakers to one. Hey. Hi. Hi, babe. Hi. Mm -hmm. Hi, Clint. Hi. I didn't know you'd be here. Who are you look at? I, um, I got really great news about Hugh tonight. Natalie? I miss my brother. I miss him every day. And I want more than anything for this to be true. But it's not. The man in that bed has blue eyes. Hugh Hughes had brown eyes. Then why is it that you're the only person running around this hospital with this crazy theory? Because nobody wants to admit that they made such a huge mistake, including you. Michael, that is your brother in there. He is alive. Even Vincent Jones saw his blue eyes. He heard him say that his name is John. I mean, could it not be more clear for you? Vincent Jones? What does Vincent Jones have to do with any of this? Hugh was a good friend of his. 
Oh, how strange. A guy like Jones having a friend that's an ADA. Well, they went to college together. They were roommates. Oh, Jones went to college? What did he major in? Gangsta 101? Vincent saw his blue eyes. He heard the man speak. He heard that man in there say that his name was John. We buried you in that grave, Michael. That is your brother. He's alive, and Uncle Bo is going to exhume the body. We're going to get DNA testing done, and we're going to know the truth soon. Johnny. Is that really you in there? Is that really you, bro? Are you sure you won't stay and have a drink with us? I'd like to, but I promised uh, Jessica that I'd look in on my granddaughter while she and Antonio are away. Just brief one. I will do that. Paige, good night. I'll talk good night. To you later. Well, would you like a drink? I would like a glass of champagne. I want to celebrate. Things are going really well for you, and... They look worse and worse for Spencer. This could end up being the best day of my life. You don't want to go up to the room? Well, it's not even late. And look, look at the moon. It's so oh. beautiful. Oh, there's moonlight in our room, too. And a bed. Oh. I am sure that that bed is going to see a lot of action. Mm. We can have a drink first. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> when did you uh, become such a night person? Well, I guess I'm uh, staying up a drink. You miss her? Yeah, I do. Mm. You know, you take care of a baby all day long. <laughs> And then you just keep asking yourself, you know, when am I going to have some time to myself? <laughs> and then when you get time to yourself, all you want to do is be with the baby. Would you like to call Nash and ask how Bree is doing? Yeah, I would. Thank you. G k k k What's the matter? You don't like your mash jams? Huh? Huh? Come on, you've loved your mashed bananas and disgusting cereal this morning. One more try. Come on, come on. No, not a chance. Don't like them. All right. You are a lady who knows her mind. Oh. Just like your mama. You know what? When you were old enough, Jessica's going to explain to you how you kind of had two mums. But not until you're old enough to handle it, I guess, huh? Not that I think I'm old enough to handle it yet. You know, I keep looking at Jessica and seeing stuff which is just straight tests. Yeah, I know. I hear you. I hear you. I got to stop doing this. Jessica is not Tess. Jessica is married to Antonio. And I need to get a life. Right? Yeah. Oh! Telephone! Hold on. Don't go anywhere. All right. <laughs> Hello. Hi, it's me. How's my girl? Oh, speak of the devil. She's doing great. She just uh, finished her dinner. Didn't like her mashed jams. Can't imagine why. Then I'm going to give her a bath and put her to bed. Sounds like you have things under control. Yeah. Oh. Sounds like you're somewhere with very beautiful music. Oh, yeah. We love it here. We're having the best time. That's great. Don't, uh, don't rush back for me, all right? I am enjoying every moment I have alone with my daughter. May I say goodnight to her? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Hey! Bree. Brennan. Bree. It's your mommy. She wants to say goodnight. Hi, baby girl. It's mommy. I miss you so much, but I want you to have the best sleep ever, and I love you. And don't you worry. Daddy's going to take great care of you. Get 
telephone. Normally, people talk through it. I know you're angry, but you're not allowed to speak to your father. Like I that. You just that? love you guys. You can call each other every name in the book. Okay, but when I okay, say so, okay, okay. We'll start all over, shall we? Sweetheart, your father and I Did you tell mom that you're transferring me out of my school Yes, yet? I mentioned it to her. Yes. And he also mentioned that after his meeting with Principal Wexler, he came back to the house and Cole was in here with you. Yeah, he came to apologize. What was I supposed to do, slam the door in his face? That's exactly yeah. right. A kid that's hyped up on drugs, that's exactly what you do. You're the one who went crazy. He's your father. What do you expect him to do, Cole Star? doesn't take that stuff anymore. Uh, we don't know that until we see the results of the talk screen. I he can was still be the in same system. guy from Halloween. The one who stood up for me when Brittany and her crew made up that stupid slideshow about you. I could tell that he really felt bad about no, what happened. He was trying to get you to keep me from pressing charges. You're right, because I'm stupid and you know everything. Okay. Okay, Star. Let's just stop a minute. You think that maybe because of what you feel about Cole that you're not seeing the truth here? What are you talking about? Well, I know that if you care about somebody and you, you like him, and I know that you like him, that maybe you're not seeing the mistakes that he's making. Are we talking about me, or are we talking about you and Dad? Unlike Chardonnay, which has an affinity for oak, Riesling is best left unoaked to retain the crisp, fresh, elegant character that makes it a nearly perfect accompaniment for any meal, especially fish. It's okay. Nighty night. I guess we'll make you a vintner some other day, huh? Okay, okay, shh. Am I too late? No, she's just falling asleep. Should I go? No, it's okay. Come on in. Come on in. All right. What a beautiful baby. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. So let me guess. Jessica and Antonia had you come by to check up on me, huh? I'm not going to lie to you, Nash. Yes, they did. Don't change the subject. This is about you and Cole and what Mom, you Mom, I do know that taking steroids is dangerous. I'm glad to hear you admit but that. But he told me why he did that, because he had to win every game for his whole team, for the whole school. Is that so? Yeah, it is, Dad. I saw it with my own eyes. Sweetie, he got aggressive with you. I know that. It'll probably take me a long time to trust him again. You want to see him again? Well, Mom's still seeing you, isn't she? Cut that out. This is not about her and me. Oh, it's not? It's always about you. I like a guy, and he likes me. And I think to myself, finally, someone who gets me. He doesn't listen to what those stupid girls say about you. He doesn't care. None of that matters. Everything is good, and then he does something stupid. And I see him for who he is. Now I'm back in my room watching reruns, and you guys are out living my life for Cut me. Cut the crap. But I'm with Cole's mother and me has nothing to do with how I feel about you and Cole. Have you ever heard of a double standard? What are you talking about? You. You are all over Cole, but you know that what you did to his mother was a hell of a lot worse than what Cole did to me. Mom, we were just wondering, how's the patient doing? He's still sedated. So his eyes aren't open? No. Okay, um, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Michael McBain. I'm a surgical resident at Landview Hospital. I was wondering if it would be possible for me to speak with the surgeon that performed the skin grafts. Uh, well, he'll be doing rounds later. Um, there's a, a picture in there of uh, a man with a soccer team. Could you get it for me? Why? It's important to me, please. You're starting to believe me, aren't you? I think that we have to find out one way or another what's going on. Right. But I'm still not sure what that answer is. So let me handle this. Do not do anything crazy. Don't worry, I got that out of my system already. Okay, I'm a little afraid to ask how. You don't want to know. Let's leave it at that. Good idea.
Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I, I'm Natalie Buchanan. This is Dr. Michael McBain. I, I would like it if you could look at these two pictures here of these two men and tell me which one just came out of surgery, you know, the man that's lying there in that bed. Why am I doing this? Please. Just do it. I go to an all-night drive-thru, and I find the greasiest, worst thing I can find. French fries and burgers. That's what I'm talking about! Yes! 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 Oh! I am bringing sexy back. <laughs> sexy never left! <laughs> Fun in the Sun is brought to you by Ziploc Double Zipper Bags. Ziploc's tightest seal ever. Should have known I'd do watch, though. Just take it easy. If Jesse and Antonio didn't think you could do it, they wouldn't have left the baby with you. Of course. I'm sorry. Besides, I know that it's uh, hard to take care of yourself and a little baby in a hotel room, and I was just wondering if you needed anything. Well, I got a drawer full of diapers, I got a mini bar full of formula, and a portable crib. I think I'm okay. Yeah, you get the pediatrician's phone number and, and Vicky's cell phone number and mine written down. Good man. Must be nice being with your daughter almost around the clock. Yeah. Yes, it is. On the other hand, I must remind you of what you're missing. I'm not going to cause any trouble for Antonio and Jessica, all right? Nash, are you having a hard time accepting that it's over? The day Jessica and Tess were integrated, the woman I love died. Well, then maybe you ought to bury her. How am I supposed to do that, huh? Son, you've got to find a way to say goodbye. So maybe you just sort of have, I don't know, a funeral for what the two of you shared together. You recognize it, you honor it, and then Nash, you got to let it go. Do you mind watching her for a while? No, not at all. I won't be long. Nash. Surely. Ceremonial. Okay. Now? Now are you ready to go spin? No. Wouldn't you right here? Uh, but the, the room's ready. No. I mean it. I want you right here. Right now. Oh, baby. Um, it's it's not that I don't love this, but um, uh, we are out in public. I know. That's what makes it so exciting. There's nobody else in the world but us. No one else here. Still want me to stop? there when uh, they brought Hugh back to his room? Uh, Natalie. How did you know? Because she mentioned that she might want to go back to the hospital. She has been so wonderful to Hugh. And I know she's still grieving for John. I mean, I wouldn't blame her if she resented Hugh for surviving the crash. Oh, thanks, Bill. Mm -hmm. I mean... If it were John in that bed, and Hugh, who was... <sighs> but it's not. He's alive, and he's strong. You know when you encouraged me to find my son? I sure do. I just thank God I'm not too late. Now I... I can... 
can finally be a mom to him. I can make a difference in his life. It's going to feel wonderful. It does. It feels so wonderful. To my son, Hugh, and to his complete recovery. To Hugh. I'm sorry. I can't tell you which of these men was operated on. Why not? I didn't see him before the surgery. I was just assigned to special him now that he's post-op. Why didn't you just say that? Natalie. Look, look, frankly, I've heard the gossip. There's supposedly some confusion about who this guy really is. There's a possibility that the bodies were mixed up at the site of the accident. That seems highly unlikely. Hugh Hughes did not have blue eyes, damn it. The man in there does. If somebody at the stupid hospital will just let me go in there Don't and Don't you look raise at your voice to me. Listen, you have to understand, we are under an incredible amount of stress right now. We believe that the man lying in that bed is actually police officer John McBain. He was, he, he is my brother, and he's Natalie's fiance. Don't you understand? If he didn't die in that crash, and he has been here all this time. <sighs> okay, I understand now. And there may be a way for you to get a look at him. There is? Well, I was just about to supervise the changing of his dressings. If you wear a gown and a mask. I'll let you she said that. a gown and a mask. We'll scrub. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay, that's going to take forever. Listen, I am not going to take a risk at infecting this man, okay? He just came out of surgery. Where do we go? I'll show you. this but I had to write it anyway I had to put into words what I never got a chance to say to you so here goes you are and you always will be the one great love of my life I will never forget you and I will always miss you but tonight I'm gonna let you go I kept getting hung up on what might have been. But then I started to see that what might have been doesn't apply to us. You're a beautiful memory. But we have no future, except in our daughter. Oh man, you, you would love her. She's stubborn, just like you. She throws back her head and laughs, just like you. I have to start living again if I'm going to do right by her. But I promise she will know who you were who you were. Brightest star always burns out fastest. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. Oh, I'd love to give you a standing ovation, but uh, I'm a little weak in the knees. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you want to go to the room now? Oh, no. I, I think you're going to have to give me a minute. Okay, I guess I should fix myself up, too. All right, you do that. Oh. <sighs> Well, you're just uh, full of surprises tonight. <clears throat> yeah, um, I found that when I was packing. And uh, this is an old purse. I haven't used it in a while. Tess. I suppose. All right, let's look at his face now. Let 
want to be John? Be John. Okay. I was a kid, and I was drunk, and I was stupid. And what I did to Marty was horribly wrong. And they sent me to prison for it because that's exactly what I deserved. I don't forgive myself for what I did. I don't expect others to forgive me because I don't deserve forgiveness. Neither does Cole. Cole didn't rape me. That's because you were smart enough to get out of the room, He Star. would never hurt oh. me. He's never going to hurt you again because you're never going to see him again. So she should be in private school anyway. And then I won't get to see Langston, and she's my only real friend. Everybody will think that I left the school because I was embarrassed or because I was afraid of Cole. And Brittany will be sure that she's one. Everyone will think that I'm a total loser. You'll get new friends. You'll get better friends. Are you kidding me, Mom? Okay, okay, look. Your dad and I will talk about it. Nothing's been decided. We know what transferring would no, be like well, for you. well, she's not setting foot back in that school unless Cole's behind bars where he belongs. Well, you would know what that felt like, wouldn't you? My life sucks, and so do you. Okay, okay, okay. Kate. Kate. Don't make things worse. I don't know how they could get any worse. Todd. Senor Vega, uh, your bags have been taken to your room. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, Mr. and Mrs. Vega. Good night. No, no, no. We got away with this once. Let's not push our luck. Okay, well, I guess you're right. First one to the room gets to be on top. No, right Todd, no. You just passed out. I had a headache. I didn't take an aspirin and didn't eat much at Rody's. Well, I still think we should go to the emergency room. Not tonight. Didn't you say you were worried about the... Oh, yeah, Todd, when, when you have cancer, everybody's afraid it's going to come back. I'm going to figure out what this is. I'll call the world's greatest not, neurologist. No, not tonight. Come on, I just, I just want to be right here, okay? All right. If you're not 100% by morning, then I'm going to drag you to the hospital. It's a headache. I'm sure it's going to be fine. I nice know you're worried. I'm worried. Star needs both of us right now. You think? I probably could have handled her a little bit better. Maybe you should have let me handle it. So, food? What do you want? Uh, chamomile tea, a little toast, and then a big bottle of aspirin. Yeah. Next time, I'll let you handle it. Just hope there is next time. I want that DNA report yesterday. I want you to understand something. Someone that I care for very, very much is going to be devastated by that report, no matter which way it goes. Now, I want it on my desk. A-S-A-P. I got to go. Are you ready? Yeah, I, I want to be at the hospital tomorrow morning when Hugh wakes up. Why don't I drive you there tomorrow? Don't you have to be at the trial? Uh, yeah, I can take a day out. No. No, I don't want you to. I love the idea of Spencer squirming while you're sitting behind him, staring bullets into his back. Well, he's staring me. <laughs> Dude. But you know something? I'll, uh, I'll follow you home, though, in my car, just to make sure that you get there safe, okay? I don't even know if I can sleep tonight. Are you worried? No, oh, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to tomorrow for the first time in so long. 
tomorrow he was going to wake up and he's going to open his eyes and he he might even talk to me and wouldn't that be incredible just don't uh, don't switch yourself up for disappointment though okay let's just we'll take it just one day at a time just as it comes i know i know i will do that after tomorrow okay i mean i got good news today i just i just want to enjoy it life to live. You're not thinking of forgiving him, are you? So what are you going to do? I'll know right after I see Truman. Miss Kramer, at any point in your relationship, were you in love with Dr. Truman? John. Hey, Natalie. 